we're going to have a go at putting the park brake mechanism back on the car. We've stripped all the rust off the adjustment mechanism. Just put a little bit of high temperature grease on that so it turns nice and easily. This is how the park shoe brakes will fit together over the hub, but actually getting them into that position and locking them in with the two springs here is easier said than done. Um, this is the old park shoe brakes and there's, there's nothing much wrong with them in fairness. They're not um, worn thin or anything like that, but they're just rusty. You can see that the old springs, etc., are just very rusty. And this kit here from Febby, part number 08324, costs just £16 for both sets of shoes. So for that price, I think we're just going to renew everything. But before we set about putting, um, or trying to put the brake shoes on, we're just going to tidy up the actual cables. This is what the cables looked like, very rusty at the end. And we're just going to go over the end. We started on this one just with a wire wheel, see if we can get that back to bare metal. You could then paint that with a rust encapsulator. And um, I don't think we're going to bother doing that in this particular case. Or you can just leave it like that and maybe put a tiny little bit of oil or something to preserve that, stop it rusting. Okay, we've tidied up the end of this to the best of our ability. It's an idea now just to put some oil on this cable and sort of see if you can get it to run down the cable just to lubricate it. And the next thing we have to do is thread the end of the cable through these two holes, one here and one just there. And then we'll set about putting the front of the cable into this little hole here. Threaded the cable through the two loops this side of the cable is going to pass into there, like so. This part here basically will bolt onto there with this end fitting, fitting in that gap. Once again, a tiny little bit of oil or grease in there, not enough to mess up the brakes, but just enough to lubricate it is a good idea. If you struggle to get the fitting in, you can just tap it in with an adjustable wrench it in like that that's just about it so we've got that fitting in most bolts to do with brakes and suspension unless they've got a spring washer you're going to have thread lock on them so we haven't put thread lock on that yet because i just want to make sure that i can actually um get this fitting here attached before I start putting any thread lock on. When you get the brake shoe kit, these brake shoes are not symmetrical. They've got a wider bit at the top than at the bottom. And at the bottom is where this bit here locks into, like so. And at the top is where this fitting locks into. Now this fitting comes apart into three pieces. Okay, this bit just turns freely in there and you should lubricate that with some grease. And um, this top fitting here is a screw fitting so the idea is when you turn this with a screwdriver through one of the holes through the hub this will push this in and out which will adjust the brake shoes in and out okay this bottom spring here is going to be hooked underneath like so and the top spring sits on top now the difficulty is getting these springs into these holes once the whole uh, mechanism is over the hub and also locating all of this at the same time. So let's give that a go. Okay, a tiny little bit of grease in there just to lubricate it. Okay, so that just needs to be pulled in like that. What do is thread this spring in first while this is still in loosely. Okay, once you've threaded that spring through, next thing to do is to attach the bottom of the shoe into the slot and then use something like a screwdriver to hook that spring into, whoops, into the hole and it is very fiddly doing it. So what you're trying to get to is that arrangement there, that end of the spring is hooked in and that should just stay there now. Like so, with this the right way around, like so, okay. So the arrangement we've got at the moment is the top spring is completely connected 
And the bottom spring is just connected on this side here. So before you just start trying to locate this spring into that hole there, that you've actually located the fitting into the bottom of the brake shoe correctly. Okay, we just use this screwdriver to hook that spring into there. And now all we need to do, well, I say all we need to do, the next thing we need to do is to pull these two um, fittings apart and just to drop in this adjuster. Get the back of that fitting in first and then either just with brute force using your hands to pull that one and locate the front bit in or you could potentially use some kind of pair of pliers or tool to do it if you're not strong enough to do it by hand. Mind you, the order of events. First you need to get the cable in. Next you need to make sure that you have got this bit facing the right way, okay? So the bit where the cable hooks into is facing outwards. Next, you've got to put this spring in first before you start messing around with the brake shoes. Next, you're going to attach this side of the brake shoe to that spring first. Once you've got that side attached, you're then going to attach the top spring and the other brake shoe, and then you're going to attach that part of the spring in. And when you've done all of that, you're going to pull the springs apart and get this fitting in. You've got to lock this in place with these here. Pass through like so, okay? And then you're gonna twist them 90 degrees. They're gonna pass through here, and they're gonna pass through the tin plate. And then you're gonna twist them 90, push them down and twist them 90 degrees to lock them in place, okay? This special tool to push and twist those springs. There's only a few pounds from eBay, and I'll leave a link at the end just to where we got it from. What we're gonna do is get this hook in there first, like so. You probably won't be able to see that on camera now, but that's now located that side of the spring in. We just need to do the other side now. Okay, we've finally got these two springs here and here located now it's important that once you've got both of the brake shoes connected that you then thread these cables through the holes here and here and connect them at the other end of the handbrake once you've pushed the cable through it's just a matter of locating it in here now the end of here should have on it a, a plastic sleeve like that often they are missing or broken like this one should just all clip in there okay we've just put a tiny little bit of grease on there and that should just tap down nice and simply like so okay what we're gonna do now is the other side and okay once you have connected the brake shoes and mechanism to both hubs, it's important that you connect both of the cables like that. Don't just connect one side and try and make adjustments. You've got to connect both and make sure the lock-in clips are in place. So we've just got to put one of the discs on and set about adjusting this little adjuster here so that um, we put, it, put the disc on and the brake pads should just be touching the disc so there's some slight um, uh, resistance and then we're just going to back that off slightly and you're basically going to be turning this down towards the ground and that's going to lengthen that fitting there so let's do that a few times when you are doing this test and um, just use your hands to push the brake disc against the hub. Don't be tempted to try and locate it using these bolts because these bolts without the wheel on are much, much longer, much too long, and they will actually hit the location springs on the way round if you do that. And you, you run the risk of bending those springs. So just use your hands and then just take it off, adjust it. Okay, I can just hear that dragging ever so slightly. We've taken it out quite a while, quite a way, sorry, and um, we're just going to wind that in a little bit now. Just hear the beginning signs of the drag, so we just take that in a few notches, try again. The part breaks on the hub, 
and now we have to just check that with three clicks this handbrake holds the wheel so one two three and we'll just go down and check that when you come to test your handbrake use a new pair of gloves try not to touch the face of the disc where you're going to be where the brake pads are going to be sitting and if you've done everything correctly with three clicks possibly four clicks on your car depends there should be no movement in this at all like that um, another thing that's worth mentioning is the locating pin here when it's exactly at 12 o'clock you will be able to get a screwdriver through this hole here and be able to feel the ratchet mechanism of the or the little star mechanism and if you need to adjust the handbrake at a later date put the pin at 12 o'clock take the wheel off and put a screwdriver through there and just move it down towards the floor to tighten that handbrake um, the only thing we need to do on this car to get it back on the road is put the calipers back on just a couple of bolts put the exhaust back on fill up the rear diff with oil which i'm not proposing to do any of that on camera and um, what i may do is a short video on how to recover from a disaster of snapping a bolt in a really awkward place which we did when talking this bolt up and um, so i may just cover that in the next video show you the different options and tools that you might use or might need to, to get sheared off bolts out we got the Park Shoe Brake Kit on eBay from these guys here, Fluid Automotive. The Febby part number is 08324. That kit fits a number of different Mercedes. That's the Mercedes part number as well. Paid £16.19 for that delivered. The tool to get the Park Brake Springs out came from the Tool Academy on eBay. It cost us £5.67.